No, I don't know why this starts with also. It's baffling to me as well. Also, there's a lot of, I don't know if this is just an, a result of the area that I'm in right now, but Nagoya is kind of on a, a floodplain or a delta, a river delta of some kind. It's pretty flat, is what I'm saying. Most cities are built on flat places, a trend which I will comment on in a later episode. And the infrastructure around here has a lot of, well, I guess it's not infra if you can see it, but there's a lot of flood channels, these very large, kind of like the uh, the Los Angeles, um, what is it called? Like It's the LA River. The aqueduct or whatever they call it. The, you know, the, the sides are kind of 45 degree angles and they've got uh, flat bottom, uh, carry water. Yes, the LA River. So there's all these channels, but they've, they've got a lot of growth in them, like trees and bushes and grasses of all kinds. I, I can't help but wonder, was this the plan from the beginning? Do they plan to have these these channels, like, just fill up with vegetation? Uh, when a flood comes, I'm assuming that they're planning on the plants being ripped out by the floodwaters and not obstructing the flow of water away from the things they're trying to keep from getting flooded, but who knows? There's the same kind of thing back in Camarillo, where a river bed was overgrown with plants and there's a bunch of sand and silt that had washed down into it. I don't know if it originally had a full concrete enclosure, but certainly my whole life it had been filled up with debris and vegetation. But it didn't seem to block the water flow in any way. The water just washes away the plants and stuff when it comes. Um, Suzuki-san, the, my coworker here, had, I mean, as much as anyone is my coworker, he is my only coworker. His desk is right across from mine. Basically, uh, we're office mates. We've got this double ISO container shelter that we uh, sit in all day, waiting for something to go wrong on the machine. Usually nothing does, but, you know, sometimes. And that's why we're here. The office even had air conditioning, which was a great luxury. But anyway, uh, he was telling me that a while ago, maybe 20 years or so ago, there was a pretty big hurricane that came through and just wrecked Nagoya, made a mess of everything, flooded, people were dying, I assume there were bodies floating in the rice paddies by his account. But anyway, he had conveyed to me that after that event, the Aichi Prefecture, uh, Prefecture is kind of like a county, basically, maybe a little bigger than a county, but smaller than a state, uh, that kind of size. Anyway, it's a, a governmental area. So the Aichi Prefecture, which is the one that Nagoya is in, decided, all right, this is this is nonsense. We're not going to do this again. So they built a huge amount of flood infrastructure to carry away the floodwaters. But then, since that disaster, everyone's kind of calmed down and forgotten about it and stopped maintaining all these flood channels, which I, I mean, maybe that's why they're all overgrown with weeds. He said if a hurricane comes through again, there's going to be a disaster again. And so he put it that if the hurricane comes through, he will probably die at that point. I was like, oh man, <laughs> that's, that's pretty bad. Or maybe it just lives in a, an area that's got very poor drainage. Who knows? If you heard that splat sound, that was the sound of a truck across the way throwing up a column of water that hit my windshield. It is, in fact, raining right now, and uh, maybe which is why it is brought to mind the fact that there are a great number of ill-maintained flood channels all over the place. So, if I did the editing well, you will not have noticed the place where I edited out the seam where I lost a bunch of recording data, because the battery in my recorder died while I was recording. And I didn't notice because I was practicing driving and not dying instead of watching the record light. But fortunately, I was able to simply stop in at a convenience store, grab myself a couple AAA batteries, and be on my way, as well as a sandwich. And uh, I think this is, I'm not even sure what this is. It's some sort of chocolate cream donut thing. I believe those are called eclairs. They're delicious. I, I can't read Japanese, so I don't know what they're called, but I eat them and I'm happy. Well, that's good. And that should be enough for anyone, I think. Now, hang on. Why did you have to put that in there?
why are you doing this this whole commentary on everyone else's happiness thing? It you're happy about it. Why should it have to be enough for anybody? So anyway, I stopped into the convenience store, and the convenience stores around here are very nice. People use them for all kinds of things. They've got a very wide selection of useful items. Uh, the Japanese aren't super big on competition, so there's usually only like maybe two major brands that they carry uh, in any particular line of goods. There aren't, I think for the batteries there was, uh, what was this? Brand Panasonic, and then there's also some sort of uh, Japanese brand, I would assume. I, I don't know, it was all written in English. It's very interesting. Japanese companies often title their companies using Latin letters or English words. And I'm not sure if this is just because it's stylish and, and modern to do so, or if they are hoping to appeal to the global market by using these names, or if they just think they're cool and foreign, or if there are no words in, in Japanese for the thing that they're trying to make their company stand for, and so they have to use English words. I, I don't know. But a lot of times they're actually English transliterations of Japanese words. So who knows? Who knows? Like Toyota. Uh, is, you know, they've got these big signs on their their companies, or the place I work at is uh, Kawasaki Heavy Industries. And so instead of having the symbol f or the kanji for Kawasaki, they actually have the word spelled in English, Kawasaki, on the outside of their factory in the middle of Japan. And I'm not sure if that's, I mean, why? I don't know. It's very complicated and it's difficult to talk to people about because, um, I don't know, it's an understandably touchy subject. And I, I respect that, so that's fine. Uh, but it is interesting to, to see all the English words uh, without any sort of English structure to them. I have been Paul Spooner. This is the Paul Spooner Podcast, and allow me to play you out.